I spawn into Cyberpunk 2077 excited to play for the same reasons everyone's excited to play. To visit the red light district, I mean to level up my character and enjoy the open world. I drive into the city and exit my vehicle and find a homeless person on the ground. His sign says he has no home, a sick kid and a cheating wife. Maybe if he spent less time making elaborate signs. I proceed to take all of his belongings as I like to loot absolutely everything to ensure I don't get gamer anxiety. I drive over to this nightclub where one of my contacts is waiting. Out the front, there's a guy showing off, but he can't throw a punch to save his life. This man couldn't get the cops to come around for a domestic disturbance if he had an entire bottle of bourbon and some knuckle dusters. I walk inside the venue and there's a man bleeding out on the pool table. Gross. My contact says that if I work with her, I'm going to have to pay her $15,000. Also, Keanu Reeves is here. He's trapped in my head because our hardware fused together. It's kind of a cute take on multiple personality disorder. Either way, we need $15,000, so this woman will help us find a cure. Luckily, I have a well-paid job as an Amazon delivery driver, and I've got to pick up a package down at the docks. On my way there, I notice there's a guy relieving himself with a literal endless stream. Peak hydration. I'm not exactly sure what's happening to his mate. My best guess is he's playing the hit new game, Among Us VR. I find the package inside a portable toilet, and it turns out to be a living human. I take him down to the sand and dump him into the water. He drowns immediately. I then get a nasty text saying that I've lost my job. Imagine firing someone over text, that's kind of cringe. I still need money, so I hit up another friend to see if she wants to street race. She's like, yeah mate, look at these overalls. Everybody at the start line is excited, and even the cops are here to ensure the road closure. They're objectively doing a horrible job, but they'll probably just teleport to the hidden runner's location after the event. The race starts, and it's an absolute nail-biter, just kidding, I win easily. $3,000 richer. A huge dust storm rolls in. Some Night City residents think these happen because we chopped down 99% of all forests, but I think it's probably just those pesky liberals vaping too much. Speaking of chopping down forests... Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. Whether you're on a hot date or kicking back with the boys, no one likes hairy balls in their mouth. I recently got the performance package that came with the Lawnmower 4.0 and all this good stuff. This little shaver is a godsend. It also comes with this nifty little nose trimmer so you can probably smell your mate's balls. 85% of surveyed women said they like men who shave downstairs and 100% of boys want your smooth little balls. I love this stuff and if you want to grab some for yourself, use code PELICAN or click the link in the description for 20% off. Just here. Hit me with a dangerous pose. <laughs> <laughs> it's very powerful coming from you, right? I head back to my home and decide I want to upgrade to a better place. So I need $15,000 to fix my brain and $40,000 for an inner city loft apartment. Fortunately, I know just how to make some big cash. You see, when fusing a human mind with technology, a lot can go wrong and sometimes people who've pushed it too far become known as cyber psychos. Hunting down these fugitives is what separates the men from the bionic men, I guess. I drive to the lad's location and begin the engagement. His party trick is that he can move incredibly quickly, but fortunately for us, he's a thoughtful cyber psycho and frequently stands perfectly still. I use all of my ammunition and secure the bag. As well as the government outsourcing these types of hits to people like me, I can also do regular police work. This generally involves heading to a gang's location and butchering every single one of them without overthinking it. The cyberpunk is realistic, they were right. Are they even guilty? Who cares? Look at these impeccable ragdoll physics. I suddenly remember that someone owes me money from the last time I played, so I drive to the red light district to collect it. And 12 year old me would have spent hours here. Adult me has spent hours here. I go and speak with the biggest baddie on the block and she pays me. We now have the $15,000 we need. On my way out, one of the girls basically forces me to go over and speak with her. It starts getting a bit intimate, and the next thing I know I've paid her $100 to give me a hot redstone Minecraft tutorial. Redstone torches will act as a power source to open all sorts of entrances. Like the video if you'd pay a scantily dressed lady of the night for Minecraft tips and tricks. Now we can finally leave, but then this lad gives me a little look and one thing leads to another. Sheep breeding can be initiated by feeding them wheat. I head back to the nightclub and pay Yellow Sweater Girl $15,000. She tells me I'll need to kidnap a guy called Hellman as he'll know how to fix my head. She gives me a contact to call and on my way out of the venue I notice there's still the same bleeding guy on the pool table. Imagine you came here hoping to play a little snooker. I call the contact who can help fix my brain. She's a woman named Panam. Little did I know at the time, but Panam would be the person my character goes on to lose his virginity to. Except for all of those call girls. And boys. I meet her and she's just not like other girls. This is demonstrated by her hot temper and interest in motor vehicles. 
She seems like a strong woman, but not nearly as strong as the support struts for her car's hood. But Panam drives me to her group's camp. The only thing more fun than sitting in a passenger seat for five minutes watching an NPC drive is arguably anything. The camp seems cool and for some weird reason walking slowly behind Panam is infinitely more fun than driving with her. She's got me carrying crates around, heavy lifting, but I don't care, I could stroll behind her all day. Panam says she'll help me kidnap Hellman if I help her get her car back. We'll have to stick with her for a while. The plan is to ambush at this town. Her truck is part of this convoy and we plan to surprise them as they roll in. So we wait until nightfall and the convoy cruises over and makes a stop. I'm then instructed to switch on the town's power and in turn all of the lights. Everyone knows that if you're going to ambush someone, you should do it in a well-lit area. Furthermore, don't light up the area until they've already arrived, so they see it light up in real time and know someone must be around. With the entire convoy on high alert, I sneak in, snap the neck of the person with the key and steal my baby girl's truck back. I drive over to where she is, half expecting Roadhead, but she asked me to get in the passenger seat. The jokes aside, I actually think it's dope they focused on having a female be a great driver. As we approach the meeting with some gangsters, Panam proceeds to rapidly accelerate and rams straight into their vehicle. That parked car came out of nowhere. We decide to stay at a hotel for the night and so I do the gentlemanly thing and follow her back to her room. She sleeps with her eyes open just like I did for the six years after my uncle stayed with us for Christmas. Now she has her truck, we can find Hellman and finally get Keanu Reeves out of our head. Hellman is in this spaceship and she fires a futuristic stinger missile at it. The ship begins falling out of the sky and we follow it to the crash site. A bunch of robots are securing the area. I can hack some of them but not many as I put all my perk points into strength because my character is an alpha male. We prepare to breach the ship. Me with a real gun and Panam with her finger guns which is great I guess. I take the shot saving this man who isn't Hellman but just a good mate of Panam's. What a huge waste of time. As those two realise most of their friends are dead, I find a katana which is my new favourite thing in the world. Maybe if they spent less time grieving and more time searching every container in the vicinity, they'd have a cool sword too. The search for Hellman continues as we tear through the desert like an Amish samurai. I decide that I'll heavily commit to this samurai character arc and only use this blade. Moments later I realise you can rip the sentry turrets off and use them to obliterate everyone, but I'm pretty sure the samurai had cannons just like this so we're still lore accurate. I locate Hellman who's hiding in a room and so I knock him unconscious which is a strange play as we need to ask him urgent questions. His security guard, who immediately surrendered, gets a warrior's death. I cut off a few of the big girl's limbs. We take Hellman back to a hotel room for interrogation and he's like, Sorry you little gorgeous Amish ninja, but if you attempt to get Keanu Reeves out of your head, you'll both die. $15,000 well spent. I walk outside and throw up because I assume my character is feeling physically ill that he invested the down payment of his new apartment into the main story missions. It's time to brush it off and make $40,000 and buy my dream home. There's a high stakes race out in the desert, but then Panam calls and she's panicking asking for help saying that I need to come urgently. She's my one and only girl, so I decide I'll only do one desert endurance race before I go and save her. As you can imagine, I win easily because I've played a lot of Mario Kart. I rush over to Panam and she's basking happily in the sunshine in no immediate danger. One of her friends has been captured and I agree to help as I really want her to give me a comprehensive Minecraft tutorial later. The Amish samurai is back at it again. I take out the outlying guards by sneaking up on them, sheathing my sword, breaking their necks and then taking my sword back out again. You don't want to blunt the blade I suppose. I managed to do this section without being noticed once so if someone wants to change their YouTube name to dad and comment saying they're proud of me that would be kosher. I find the captured friend and to be honest he's a bit of a wet blanket. In most cultures eye contact is the bare minimum for a social interaction. We escape in a van but a sandstorm rolls in which is derude. Our only chance to survive is to shelter in this little cabin. It's quite romantic, but the guy I rescued won't leave. I don't know what I'd feel like doing after being violently interrogated for several days, but box blocking a homie wouldn't be at the top of that list. I make a move on Panam and she rejects my advances. Uh, the... no. I take back all of my sarcastic remarks, this game is actually very realistic. In the morning she says she wants to take it slow, but she does give me a little smooch on the lips. It's a pretty sweet gesture and it reminds me a lot of Christmas with my uncle. While I wait for Panam to call me back, I go back to my roots. Good old fashioned police work, but this time with a katana. I'm 100% convinced using a sword is the best way to play this game. My favourite tactic is to use biohazard grenades to gas out a gang's hideout. An ethically ambiguous strategy, but I'm an officer of the law and I'm not about to let the Geneva Convention stop me from keeping the streets safe. $40,000 earned and I proceed to buy my new apartment. The street and buildings seem nice and we even have a concierge. 
That will be perfect for if I ever need a cab cold or a moist towelette delivered to my room. What a useless profession, but still, concierges for sure work harder than whoever initially bug tested this game. A few of you said I was too hard on Cyberpunk last video, and I'll admit you were right, it's actually really fun now. My apartment is absolutely stunning. Nah, it's alright, we've got a pool table, and I try to make a shot, but I miss, and my guy gives the rude finger to the cue ball. What a badass. We have a nice lofty bedroom, an old video game arcade machine, fresh coffee, and yeah, I can't wait to visit this place two or three more times ever. Just when I've settled in, I receive a call from Panam, and she needs my help again. Unfortunately, I'm already in the desert, right next to her camp. It's almost as if I googled how to bang Panam, and I'm following a guide to ensure I don't mess it up. I go and talk to the team, and I just straight up start white knighting. I'm Team Panam. You really think you can forbid Pan Am from doing anything? Trust me, no point. She'll do whatever she wants. No, she won't. You can almost smell the desperation on his voice. I follow Panam around camp. I'll just keep talking for a moment because I'm sure for whatever mysterious reason you guys will enjoy this leisurely stroll. We drive over to the train station because the crew wants to steal a train so they can then heist a tank from the government. It sounds like a classic overly elaborate NPC plan, but that's okay. I'm here for one reason only, to find myself an Amish wife to live with me in my new apartment. As the sun sets, we lock eyes and the atmosphere is magic. I proceed to engage in some premarital upper shoulder rubbing. She immediately walks away. The ambush is set up and we engage the soldiers. It's one of those encounters where the enemies are higher levels than me, so they take 10 shots to the face to die, just like in real life. Fortunately, I have an asthma puffer to get me through the hard times. It's crazy, even with all these inhalers, you guys who watch my videos still take my breath away. We manage to steal the tank and Panam asks if I'd like to drive. It's a cool hover tank that somehow has better handling than every other vehicle in Night City. I practice shooting some car shells and we're having some good clean Christian fun. Panam then looks into my eyes like they were the window to my soul and says, Are you a minecart? Because I want to ride you all night long. Minecarts can be boosted by using the special powered rails. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. I love you almost as much as I love walking behind Panam.